You've been a co-founder at Startup Digest, mm -hmm. and you just recently, Startup Weekend, acquired you or something like that. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, does it count like an exit? I mean, the Startup Weekend is a non-profit. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> well, what exactly means being acquired by a non-profit? It's interesting. So, we were actually, so we were a for-profit company, and they're a non-profit, uh -huh. and they bought us. <laughs> yeah. Which is fascinating. How it works. <laughs> um, it's pretty simple. It works like any other acquisition. Um, so, did you get money? Yeah, um, we had a, we had another um, competing offer, so another company wanted to purchase us, um, but that um, for a lot of reasons didn't work out. The reason why we really really liked Startup Weekend is because like they were going to keep the brand and keep the company living on, um, so they really really cared about the publications versus the other company kind of cared more about just like all the email like yeah. subscribers. They wanted to basically just like kill the newsletter and just like email. what that would be like really expensive purchase of the mailing list. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we decided that it was much more important to have, like, the digest and the newsletters live on and for it to keep doing what it was doing. And Startup Weekend was interested in it, so we made something happen. <laughs> okay, so... It is, it's not very not standard, but it, it kind of worked out. <laughs> okay, it's like, is it your first exit? Like, yeah. Or you're a serial entrepreneur now? Uh, I guess that's my first one. Um, okay. I started now my second company right afterwards, so... I was oh. I was reading like uh, the, the, in the news that basically what you're doing now is kind of continue the startup digest the VIP, which is a jobs section or sort of yeah. So we built this um, startup digest VIP. It was this recruiting product. So we had like engineers, designers, product managers, and companies, and this is a way for all of them to meet. Mm -hmm. And we got paid like recruiters in the middle for anybody who joined any company. Um, that was how like we made all of our money through Startup Digest. You did make money. Yeah. Wow, that's innovative. Oh. Especially for a Silicon Valley <laughs> company. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. No, we made money. Um, but uh, one of my friends, Danielle, who ran this thing called the Teal Foundation, they do this thing called the 20 under yeah. 20 program. They basically give 20 kids $100,000 to drop out of school and do whatever they want. <laughs> um, when she saw this product, she was like, oh my God, you can put mentors on one side, fellows on the other side. This is a way for them to meet without always going through me in the middle. She sort of saw it like a group management tool, like for her, for yeah. her, for the unrelated team. to the specific like recruiting. Exactly. So that's when it got us to realize like, oh, this is much more generalizable than we thought. For us, like we thought about it just like a recruiting product, just for ourselves. Mm -hmm. When a lot of these other groups have the same problem, you have all of these members and you want all of them to meet, but when you have like one organizer and a lot of people, it becomes a lot of work for that one person. Yeah. Um, so we make their lives a lot easier. So, so you simplify like if I'm an organizer or like I have to connect all this like do this on manually and you somehow like yes. somehow improve that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's sort of like um, it might be a bad connotation but it's sort of like an internal dating site so it lets people sort of pair up match and meet each uh -huh. other um, without always going through that one person. Yeah without the like the middleman who says like yeah. the bottleneck. Yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 uh, the VIP section does it still live? Uh, no, so so when Startup Weekend bought Startup Digest, they decided to kill this the recruiting product. So we still have the right. the software, if you will, but the actual recruiting product isn't going That's, anymore. I mean, I mean, I was I was going to ask about like angel list talent. Yeah, it's probably like would would kill it anyway. I mean, it's the, the same thing. Just you don't have to, even to pay. So. Yeah, so um, yeah, they compete. took a much different approach in it. So they made it like a very open thing. Mm -hmm. um, so like anybody can sign up for Angelus, anybody can go on the talent thing. Ours was a very, very screen thing. So you actually had to like oh, apply. So, so had... you, you, you screen both sides? Yes. Like in companies yes. and uh, developers? Exactly, yeah. Uh -huh. So it was like a much, um, it was a, a, like a much smaller subsection of people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, for that we took like the recruiting fee of it. So, uh, Angels, uh, the, the talent portion is awesome, and what they're doing is crazy, it's like amazing. Um, but we took a very different approach on sort of the recruiting problem. It was, it was, it was quite fast. I mean, I've, I've heard, the first time I've heard about Startup Digest was like, two year, maybe less than two years ago. Okay. And you probably just started, right? Yeah, that well, must have been early. <laughs> and now, now it's like done, it's a part of the yeah. uh, weekend. How did you hear about the, the Digest originally? I don't know, I, I'm, I'm like a... A the t Twitter user yeah. and like more, like <laughs> half of them might like Twitter accounts that they follow out in Silicon Valley, so basically kind of plugged in into like what's going on. So okay, I, I don't remember really. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but two years ago, that was early. Yeah, we started the company in November two thousand nine. 
Um, so, did you, like, the, what what the, was the original plan? Did you like plan to make money, or how did like how did you start? Yeah, what was um, the plan? so I basically I moved to Silicon Valley in June two thousand nine. When uh -huh. I first moved out there, like I didn't know freaking anybody or anything. I literally just like threw all my stuff in my car and drove up there. Um, and I started just like going to events to like meet people um, because like I didn't know anybody or anything. Like I wanted to start like you're supposed to go to meetups. Yeah, <laughs> to um, meet people. So I realized like there was a lot of stuff going on in Silicon Valley, but it was hard for me as an outsider to know like what was good and what wasn't. So I just started going to all these things, and I started picking the best events for myself. Mm -hmm. And then some of my friends were like, "Hey, like that's kind of cool. Can you send this to me too?" So in November 2009, we sent the first newsletter out. Originally, just 22 people. It was literally in Gmail. We just sent an email out. We said, hey, here's some cool things going on in Silicon Valley. And it was just a listing of That's great news. Uh, they started the same way. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so the original one was it wasn't really intended to be like a company or anything. Um, but in the first month, I think we had like five or 6,000 people sign up. Uh, in the second month, we had somebody who wanted to do Startup Digest but for New York City. And then in the third month, we were on TechCrunch, and then people were wanting to give us money to like be advertisers for the newsletter. So it just sort of grew like quickly, yeah. and um, people wanted to give us money. So we're like, okay, maybe there's something here. Uh, we Why turned into they, a company. You mean money like for advertisement, right? Yeah, yeah. They wanted to be to sponsors. Get the subscribers. They wanted to, to be like subscribers. Yeah, the first one was it was originally a, a, a bigger conference, so it was called the. Uh, um, the social gaming conference put on by Charles Hudson. Mm -hmm. So uh, he wanted to promote his conference in the newsletter. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't do this anymore, but we, we just put like a, um, we did almost like a contest. So I think we gave away a few tickets, and then the people who didn't get the tickets, they can get like a discount thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we actually sold like, I think nine or 10 um, tickets for his event. And his event was like 300 bucks. So we realized like, hey, like there's actual value here. Like there's transactions actually mm -hmm. going on. Um, and like somebody's willing to give us money for it. And it like worked ROI for him. So like, there's probably something here. Mm -hmm. It was still like super early, and like, you know, it was just an email newsletter. Like, it wasn't anything else. Um, but you didn't we, have a, a site even, right? I mean, like working. Uh, the first month we didn't. Um, actually, to get our uh, the, the first month we made this terrible, terrible site. It was basically just like one page. It was like just straight HTML. Yeah, I, it, I kind of remember that. It looked terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, uh, we got our TechCrunch article in uh, January 2010, so two months after mm -hmm. we started. And one of the um, uh, contingencies of getting that article is we had to come out with a new site or they wouldn't write about us. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh. You're too oddly. <laughs> I know. So we just we made like a WordPress site. Uh, we had like a real like sign up form and everything. And then that's when we got the TechCrunch article. <laughs> Yeah, they wouldn't write about us with their fat side. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so basically, the the start digest today is to like create a list of events. Oh, because in the, oh, well, I I I am a subscriber at Twitter, and like you basically post like interesting stuff to read. Yeah. It's like a different story, like or yeah. So the the most the thing we're most known for is all the newsletter subscriptions. Um. So yeah, it's like a listing of the best events in your city, and we do it now. I think it's in 148 cities all around the world. Um, there's about like 250,000 people who like subscribe to all these places. I check it um, out. There is no like creator in Ukraine, so yeah, I don't we'll think go there is. Fix. Um, sure, yeah, um, yeah. Anybody that wants to be a curator, like it's an open system, so you just go startupdigestcom slash curator You can just yeah. apply and see like what, what it takes. Um, but yeah, anybody can do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, one one topic I really wanted to talk to you about, and maybe learn something. I'm an entrepreneur. There's other entrepreneurs watching this and like uh, I have a like, technical background, I was a programmer mm. and um, I see this a lot of times with my friends, like people are building products and like they think that if you build a great product, mm. somehow you'll get users Yep. and <laughs> it doesn't happen, Yep. <laughs> at least now, I mean it used to happen like 5-10 years ago yeah. when it was like much smaller. Like, Less noise on like mm. in, the, in the markets, fewer services, but now it's much more complicated. And you guys get like f super fast crows. Can yeah. You, like, tell us how, something yeah. about that. How how do you do that? I yeah. Want to um, it's a very common problem, actually. You see this all the time, uh, all over the place. But um, in, especially in Silicon Valley, where you see somebody make a company and or somebody make a product, and the the number one problem after they make this product is, okay, how do I get people to use this? Um, so how do I get people to yeah. use it? Uh, it's interesting. I'm very, very fascinated by this, this subject too. But for Startup Digest, what we did in the beginning, um, so super early. So when we first started, it was one email, 22 people, super mm -hmm. small. 
And I was actually going to all these events. Um, and for events, nobody usually nobody writes about events beforehand. They love to write about them after the yeah. event happened, but nobody writes about an event before. So we would feature all these events before the event happened. So all these organizers, all these event organizers, really, really liked us. So I would just yeah. ask them. So I would say, like, hey, like, is it okay if I just speak for, like, 20 seconds after the event's done telling people what we're doing? And most of them were like, yeah, sure, go like ahead. favor and favor. Exactly. So I'd go up on stage, and I would, for 20 seconds, I'd just be like, hey, I do this thing called Start Digest. We tell you about the best events in Silicon Valley. If you go to the site or talk to me, you can sign up. That's it. Uh -huh. um, and then that took us from, like, probably the 22 people to about three, 4,000 or so. Um, and then... Uh, then we did our first city, New York City. So we were doing it in two locations. How we got all of our users for the New York City one is we just emailed all the people on the Silicon Valley one telling them we're going to do a New York City uh -huh. one. <laughs> Very simple. <laughs> uh, so then we were in two cities. And then we just on our sign-up form, we had Silicon Valley, New York City. And then, hey, if Startup Digest isn't in your city, apply to be a curator here. And it was just a link to an application form. Mm -hmm. And then in January, that's when we got our TechCrunch article. So that day, I think we got probably three or 4,000 new people subscribed. And we had from, all... From the TechCrunch. Like, directly from yeah. that. And then we had all these people applying to do Startup Digest in their city. And I think by the end of that month, I think we're in about 17 or 19 cities or so. Did you somehow screen the people who, yes. who were applying um, to be creators? So See, yeah, all the people who apply to be curators, they either have to be a hacker themselves, a founder themselves, or investing in startups. They have to be part of the community yeah. in some way. They can't be, like, I don't know, some, like, random accountant yeah. to like startups. Marketing <laughs> specialist. Yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> So we would just talk to them, not like you know super hard or anything, but just to like make sure they're actually part of the community. And if they were, then they can do the the digest for that city. Mm -hmm. um, and now we have, I think we have a hundred and sixty curators. Um, there's probably even more like alumni and stuff. Yeah. And, and now now that we sold it, like we added all these cities. I don't even know like how the people now. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's it's actually turned out to be like this like strong network of people. So literally like. Like most cities, like any city I'm in, like I at least know one person. I know the curator yeah. in every city. Um, it's like, great for travel, right? <laughs> yeah. Like here it's Thomas. I can't pronounce his last name, but Thomas does the Lithuania edition. He's actually upstairs at the start of weekend yeah. right now. Um, and like, yeah, we hung out here and like I knew at least somebody before I came. <laughs> That's great. Um, did, you, like, did you plan it from the beginning or was it was like an accident? I mean, going over the other the, the, like global or... Yeah. So, um, no, no, it wasn't really planned. What did, you, what did you launch New York? Did you want to go to New York events or what? No, it was actually so. Um, my friend, his name was Carter Cleveland. Um, we were, uh, he was living in Silicon Valley and like we just used to like party and stuff all the time. He was like a very like smart, awesome guy. Um, he moved back to New York City and he was the one that really wanted to do Startup Digest for New York City. Mm -hmm. Initially, I think we were sort of like, like no, like are, you know, are people really gonna want like New York City stuff? It was, it was it, at the Nobody time. Nobody cares about New York. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, at the time, it was just this really small thing that I was doing for myself. But he really wanted to do it, so we're like, okay, like it's not a company, like sure, why not? And that's when we sort of came up with this curator model, where so he was like a founder of his own company. He would pick the best events, and then we would do all the publishing. Um, mm -hmm. And then after that, like we we just put like, hey, do you want to do startup digest in your city on the forum? I don't. I, at the time, I don't think I really thought through. Like you know, I, of course, I didn't think like we were going to be like in 150 cities by any means. I thought you know maybe a couple of people would be interested in it. But definitely after that TechCrunch article, that's when you realize like, holy crap, like this is getting big because we had people apply not from like even the major cities. Like we had like Atlanta and like Vancouver and like Shanghai and like. Paris and Cape Town, South Africa, and like uh -huh. all these places that that had like small startup communities where they were, and they wanted their city um, and all of their activities to sort of be known. And very quickly, it turned into this. Um, like e even literally within like first six months, like we were mostly international. So mm -hmm. very very quickly, we turned from this like small little thing to this international mm -hmm. media company very fast. Um, like I, I want to use this opportunity to ask like a. Not a personal question, just something that is interesting, interesting to me personally. Uh, the, I, I've read the Kaufman Foundation was mm -hmm. uh, they gave you like 200k yep. for some reason. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I, I do this profit show, which is also like non-profit, uh, like interviews with founders. Yeah. Kind of. So what's the reasoning? How do? How did you? Why do? Did they give you money? And like, 
how it works. Yeah. Um, so the coffin, how do you pitch them to get? Yeah. <laughs> so the Coffin Foundation is a big um, foundation, mainly around entrepreneurship. So they're like a three billion dollar foundation, uh, and they invest in all programs that are sort of supporting um, entrepreneurship, mainly in the United States. So they they're funding um, uh, sort of weekend mm -hmm. us. Uh, Angelist, I'm not sure if that's public, but I guess it is now. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, also, Global Entrepreneurship Week, and a whole mm -hmm. bunch of other things. You go to their site and see all their, see all their programs. Um, I met them really randomly. Um, so I met their, the guy who was running Global Entrepreneurship Week, mm -hmm. which is going on right now. <laughs> yeah. uh, the guy who was running that, uh, Jonathan Ortman. I met him in D.C. Um, and then at the time, they were doing this event for all of the Global Entrepreneurship Week organizers in Dubai in like a month or so. So I randomly, I just asked him, I'm like, hey, like, can I come? And he was like, sure. <laughs> I'm like, great. <laughs> so in a month I was in Dubai. So went to Dubai. <laughs> I went to Dubai. Uh, and then um, all the guys from the Coffin Foundation were there. And this guy, he doesn't work with them anymore. His name was Bo Fishback. Uh, he ran all their investments for the Coffin Foundation. I heard him talk, and afterwards, I just walked up to him because you know it was just all internal. And I, I was like, "Hey, I do this thing called Startup Dive. Just like this is what we're doing." And he was like, "Oh, I love it! Like, if we could help, if we can give you money, like, let me know." And I was like, "Great." Uh, <laughs> Here's uh, the, the the wire instructions, right? <laughs> so um, there with me was also Mark Nager from Startup Weekend, and he was also asking them for money. So this uh -huh. is how me and Mark really met and became friends in Dubai. Uh -huh. Um, which is much, which is very important later on too. Um, but so we met, we both met Bo together, and uh, Bo said, "Hey, the next time you're in Kansas City, because they're based in Kansas City, let us know." So we said, "We're actually going to be there next month." We weren't going to be there next yeah. month, so we decided to put on a, a sort of weekend in Kansas City and have the Coffin Foundation fund that sort of weekend. Um, so we went over there, and then we formally pitched them. We gave them like the pitch deck, what we're doing, mm -hmm. um, and they said, "Like we we like what you're doing. Like how much do you guys need?" And we said, $200,000? And they're like, okay. And we said, great. <laughs> we should have asked for a lot more. <laughs> so but, did, uh, they, did you become investors or what? Is that, uh, so is the, it grants? How? Yeah. Um, so they were. Uh, so since we're a for-profit company, there's like limitations on what a foundation can give. Mm -hmm. So technically, they were a sponsors of ours. So it, if you're signed up for any of the United States newsletters, you'll see like there's a little spot for the Coffin Foundation yeah. in all of the newsletters. Um, so they were technically a sponsor of ours for okay. two years, and we gave them that two-year sponsorship contract for the two hundred thousand yeah. dollars. It's basically a contract. It's not. They didn't become an investor. Yeah, yeah. They were pretty close, and like we we're um, uh, Bo. Bo left recently, or Bo left shortly after to start a company called Zarly. And there's a guy, uh, um, Nick Seguin, who sort of stepped in. So us and Nick were like pretty close, and um, even though they were just the sponsors of ours, like we we're um, we had a sort of close relationship. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, it's, it's great uh, that I fo found you here in in Vilnius, and thanks a lot for the talk. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and good luck with the uh, like the second second uh, okay. next lecture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've been watching Profit Show. My name is Max. Uh, please subscribe to new episodes at ProfitShow.tv. <laughs>